Hi friends. So today I thought we would play with some of these little Africa daisies that I saw when I was on the road in Solvang. They were just beautiful and they were covering the mountain. Um, and they were in orange and yellows, just beautiful. So I wanted to just go over some of the strokes that we'll be using. Um, I talk about all the time. The C stroke, um, the thin stroke, the compound stroke, and a little bit of my favorite dabbing, right? You see me do that all the time. So let's go ahead and um, just get some paint that we can just go over real quickly some of the strokes. So we will be using a thin stroke. I've got my Velvet Touch Princeton number no. eight round. And then this is just some student grade cold press paper, 140 pound. And I'm always using Windsor Newton paints, which I just, I love their color. I love their choices of colors and they go on the paper so beautifully. I do have links um, in my description too, if you'd like some of those. Haven't quite figured out the affiliate links yet, but um, I get asked a lot about these brushes. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the thin lines, we're going to be using the point of our brush and we're going to be holding it mostly um, up and down, but I'm going to slant mine a bit just so you can see what I'm doing here. So practice a few of these thin lines, which are perfect for stems and a variety of different things. That could even be grass. So do a little page of those, or at least a little line. And then let's do a little bit thicker stroke for the leaves. So pushing down into your brush and just some of this here. Let me get a little darker paint for you. So you're just putting a little bit more pressure. Push down, lift up, push down, lift up. And these are also the C strokes that I talk about. <clears throat> that is basically what I use in all my paintings. So we're going to now move on to, and you can stop this video and just practice a whole line of these, the compound stroke, which is actually what I use mostly for my leaves. So we're starting with thin, pull your brush, begin pressing into, and then release, and you get this beautiful leaf, okay? So if you wanna stop the video and practice those thin, pushing in, and then pulling up, okay? And let's create a different kind of leaf. So we do the same thing on the other side, and this is actually in my free ebook I've created for you that you can get. It's also in my links. And so we're going to create the other side of the leaf, thin, push, and there you go. So that is basically the stroke I use all the time for my leaves. Thin, thick, thin, thick. Now you can do either way. You can just do a leaf like this, or you can do the right and the left. You can also practice really lengthening those leaves out. So thin, thick, and make it really long. And if you want, add in the other side, thin, thick. So there you go. Okay, and then the other, I don't even think I'd call it a stroke. I don't even know if it's such a thing. It's just what I refer to it as. I use this dabbing all the time. So it's just pushing into the point just this type of thing, dab, dab, dab. And I use this all the time. Now you could also use that for some filler leaves. And don't forget my friends, have two containers of water because you want one to wash and one to rinse your brush. Always be working with clean brushes when you're switching from color to color, really important. So let's just practice I don't know if I'll use these in this painting, but you can even do a leaf with 
these round, beautiful brushes. And that's why it's so important to, to make sure I have a tutorial on storing your brushes. Never store them, keep them in your water. It damages the tip and we always wanna do all we can to preserve the integrity. The water can get into the ferrule and you can start using losing bristles. And I've also had brushes that the um, finish here started chipping off. So here's some little examples of dabbing using the tip of the brush for these little filler leaves. And I think those are beautiful. You could even add to a thin line. And that would be a beautiful leaf. I'm gonna turn my paper here, kind of using the side of my brush here. So that's a beautiful leaf. There you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let me grab my paper here. And we'll get started with our little daisy, which I'm going to use a combination of yellow, cad yellow, cad orange. Again, all Windsor Newton colors. So here is my cad yellow. Let me just, I did spray my paints, but they look like they could use a tad more. So I always spray my paints when I know I'm getting ready to paint and it just activates them and gets them ready to use again. So here's my cad yellow. There we go. And I'm going to start with, I wish I had my picture, a picture in front of me of these beautiful African daisies that we saw covering the fill. So this is that dab and you're making kind of like a little dome shape is what I noticed in them. And they actually even had some black in them. Now I'm going to wash my brush, rinse it in my clean water, and I'm going to just lightly touch to get some of the excess water off. And then go back in for a lighter version, more water of this cad orange and yellow and going to start creating these beautiful little petals. So compound stroke here, thin, thick, and pull out. Thin, thick, and pull out. And these were so beautiful. I'd never seen so many. Thin, thick, thin, thick, and as I get towards the middle of my flower, I'm going to make my brush stroke a little bit thicker because it's in the front, thin. So I'm gonna push down a little bit more, thin, thick, maybe even add to the side of it. And then I'm going to go back in and add just a little bit of orange because I saw a lot of orange in these. So maybe just to the tips, I know I painted something like this the other day, very similar. Actually, before I even saw these flowers this weekend, I, I had noticed these around here. So what I'm doing now is I just have not too wet of a brush and I'm pulling the paint down so I can kind of spread that color. Now, I don't always do this, but when I'm using student grade paper, I notice it doesn't quite spread as well. If you're going to invest in one thing, invest in your paper. Arches is amazing. Of course, I have tons of these little pads that um, I use that are a little bit more inexpensive. Now, I'm going to go back in because I noticed in the flowers and the pictures I took, they had a little bit of brown in here kind of down near the bottom where the, the petals start to come out. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that. So I think that's really pretty. I'm gonna go in and add my stem. So I wash, rinse my brush, tap it off just a tiny bit, and then let's get some of that sap green and olive green. I use these two colors mostly. And I'm going to go in and do a petal, I, not a petal, a stem. And I'm using that thin line, using the tip of my brush. 
So make sure your stem is always pointing to the center of the flower. If I was to point it over here, that wouldn't look right, right? So let's just, it's pointing to the middle, very light touch like that. The other thing I noticed is the little leaves, they were kind of prickly. Now you could certainly do point press a leaf like that and you'd be perfectly fine. But I noticed these had little like that, with these little points on them. And I have an app that tells you what kind of flowers these are and it said it recognized it as an African daisy. So I thought that was kind of cool. So next to this one, I'm going to put another one down here and I'm going to make it a little bit more yellow because the pictures I took, they were mostly yellow and orange. So we'll do one more. So I'm creating that little dome that I saw in all of them. I'm actually going to go ahead and add in the brown right now because I'd like to see that brown pull out into some of my petals. So let's washing my brush, get that brown off and then rinsing my brush. I'm going to use mostly yellow here. So point, press. Ooh, that is the perfect color I saw in them. Point, press. And you're kind of using that C shape, right? Point, press and lift. Point, press press and lift. Look at how pretty that is. I'm going to add a tiny bit more water so it blends with this brown color. Point, press. There we go. Oh, I think that's really pretty. Might just add in a little bit of orange, just dabbing it in. And then if I want to help that spread, I'm going to rinse my brush, have just a little bit of water, not too much. And I'm just going to kind of pull. I think I'll do a video on pulling paint because I, I do this quite often. So you'll see me doing that in a lot of my tutorials. I also talk about leaving that white space. So as you see, I've got a lot of white space in here. And then I'm going to create that stem using my fine stroke, which is light pressure on the tip. So this type of thing. And that's why it's so important, everyone, to practice those brush strokes. I do pages and pages of them. So I'm going to bring this down. I noticed too the stems were quite long and then I'm just going to create another one of these leaves leaving some white space dab 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 now you don't have to make yours you know, like this, but I thought that was kind of fun. So wash, rinse my brush, and I might add a tiny bit of yellow into these. Now watch how pretty. I have some yellow. This is still wet, and I'm just going to barely touch these. Not pretty. Kind of add some interest. And then our last little daisy Let's do one right here. I always like working in threes. So I'm going to go back into that yellow for the middle. Now I really should have moved my painting up a little if this was an actual composition. But I'm gonna make this one facing us. So dab, 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 get that center. Wash my brush, and I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the center. Maybe just to show a little bit of darkness here. 
maybe just around that bottom edge, wash and rinse my brush, blot it a tiny bit on my paper towel, and maybe add in a little bit of brown. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? How it's all blending. Now let's make this one orange. Actually gonna blend it a little bit with the yellow, the cad yellow and the cad orange because I don't want it to be too heavy on this side. So I'm gonna create a really orangey yellow. Okay, and then let's work. This one is facing us, so I'm going to have it show all the petals where here is more of a side view. So point, always point the tip of your brush to the center of your flower. Point, press, there we go. I get just a tiny bit more water. Point, press, lift up, point, press, always making sure you're pointing to that center part of the flower. Otherwise, it's going to look wonky. So point, press, lift up. And I might turn my paper here. A lot of the flowers, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tiny bit of red because I saw that in a lot of them too. They were had a lot of red in them. So point, press. Ooh, look at that color. That is the perfect color I saw. So we're just going to do this all the way around. I'm going to turn my paper so my arm isn't in front of you. Point, press. Point, press. Point, press. Point, press. And you know, you can make press. These leaves can go kind of tilted. Point, press. So there you go. There's this beautiful orange daisy. The other thing I thought would be fun for you guys too, typically when I am selling my paintings, I sell them for a decent amount, but I thought it'd be fun for those of you that are painting these and then um, referring back to my video. It might be kind of fun for you to have this actual piece that you learned from and to put it next to yours. Um, I thought I would sell them for, I don't know, $25 on Etsy, and they're typically going to be this size, which is about five by seven. And you could have it, like this is the painting I learned on. I watched Debbie paint this. So I thought that might be kind of fun for you. So I'm just gonna start doing that today. So let's create this stem here, point, little fine line, there we go. And let's see, what else could we do here? Let's make another leaf here. So I'll link my Etsy shop. It doesn't have a lot of stuff in there, but I thought this might be kind of fun. I wish I had, I would have bought paintings that I watched my mentors do. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna try something different here. I'm gonna use my gold green Windsor Newton and I'm just gonna go in and, ooh, look at how interesting that is. Isn't that fun? And kind of darken up. Now I'm just using the point of my brush. Some of these, because I did notice these little daisies had that in them. So here's a perfect filler. Let's, there was a lot of, I think they called them parsley or something like that, but they were these yellow flowers that I thought was really unique. So, and there was tons of them. Now it looked like the mustard that I get here in my city. Oops, I dripped, so I'm just going to lift that up. And I'm gonna put little mustard coming out in between because there was a lot of them blowing in the wind. So the way I'm going to do that is just dab, dab, dab. And they were these little clusters. So this just is a good filler. 
it kind of adds some interest. And these cover the hills here. Now I feel like I'm getting really bunched up. So I think what I might do to improve on this is, hmm, let's have, darn, I'm running out of room here. Let's have a daisy, African daisy come out right here, but we're gonna do a side version of that. So I'm rinsing, washing and rinsing my brush, dabbing it off, and then I'm going to do some little petals here. Um, so let's do point, press, and lift. Let me get this again. Point, press, and lift. It's kind of fun. Since this is the side point, press and lift. Now I'm gonna go from the top down, point, press, there we go. Maybe one more over here, point, press and lift. Okay, so that's kind of the, uh, I meant to have this facing upwards because that's more interesting. I get talking to you guys and I kind of forget what I'm doing here. So you're going to be able to see kind of the side of the little core of the flower. So look at that. That's pretty. I think that created a little bit more interest. And then I'm going to just put some little green in here. Now, this is mustard where we're where I see it here at my house, but I noticed they called it Hold on, and I'll tell you exactly what they called it. Parsley, desert parsley. So there was a lot of that. So I think this is pretty good unless I was to make one more here, like a little bloom that hasn't even opened. Now, if this ever happens to you, I love when it bleeds and blends, but if you really don't like that, you can always dry your brush and just kind of lift it out. That's another tutorial I wanna share with you. Let's just lift it with a dry brush, but I like the way it blooms like that. Okay, so we're gonna do one, or you know, maybe we'll do a little pod that hasn't even opened yet up here, okay? So I'm going into my green again, my sap green and olive green, and I'm going to just, because I really feel like I need something going in this direction. So here it is, and this is just a little flower that hasn't even opened yet. Yeah, I like that. Bring that stem down. Okay. And then let's just add a little bit of color and I want it to bleed. So I want to do this while this is still wet. Let me go into some of my yellow. And we're just going to touch this so it kind of bleeds. Ooh, look at that. Not pretty. So I think that kind of created some interest. I, again, I have my odd numbers, so that's good. I'm happy with that. If you wanted to add maybe a few more of, let's see, where could we add them? Maybe over here, some of these African, I think that's what they said, African cilantro. You could do that, add in some of the green. And there was a lot of this. I mean, the hillsides were covered in yellow. So there you go, something to play with. 
All right, well, I hope you guys loved that. I will sign this, and uh, actually, I'll sign it right now if you like. Please take advantage of my little ebook, first one I've ever done. And I'm going to date it and put African Daisy Tutorial. African Daisy Tutorial. So how fun to have a little collection of these, I think. I have stacks and stacks of these, but I thought, you know, you guys might like those. And it's, you know, $25, it's very affordable. And I think it'd be cute framed or displayed with your version of painting this. So check it out if you have any questions. I am new here on YouTube, but I think I'm getting the hang of it. And just loving your guys' questions and feedback and so happy that... I'm able to inspire you and share a few tips. Um, you can go to the link and sign up for my emails, even though I don't have things going out in my email until probably the end of the year. But get your free little um, book, too, your free little ebook. It's kind of fun and has a lot of the things I talk about. So thank you so much. You guys are so kind, and I'm so happy to be here with you. And I hope you give this a try. Okay, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.